Oh, this looks fantastic. So I just got back from the first session. I preached on Jesus looking for Mary. The voice of the Son of God is going out, calling all those who will sit at his feet. A lot of times what happens is we have a desire for the things of the Lord and not the Lord himself, but a soul desire for him alone. This is a different breed. This is a Mary company, a collection of those who have seen his feet as their home, their peace, their joy, their refuge, their strength. Already starting, great. <laughs> <laughs> Is Amy up there? Uh, but Amy might be co leading. and he didn't have to say anything. People were just getting plastered. Oh. Are you happy, Ben? Am I happy? Are you happy? <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> My room number is 430, which reminds me of Ephesians 430. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Paul borrowed this language of grieving the Spirit from Isaiah chapter 63 in the Old Testament. In Isaiah 63, the Bible says that God picked up his people and he carried them. This is God's strength, not the efforts of men. Then the next verse says, but they rebelled and grieved the spirit. So the rebellion was not allowing God's power to take them. They wanted to employ their own self efforts. This is grieving the spirit. We've always thought that grieving the spirit is according to something that we've done, but there's something that lies beneath grieving the spirit by what we do, and it is rejecting God's power to perform the thing. So when Paul says in Ephesians 4.30, do not grieve the Holy Spirit, he is saying, don't 
employ self efforts because you will block the empowerment of God's Spirit. So grieving the Spirit is rejecting the empowerment of God's presence in your life. This hurts Him when you don't let Him perform the thing Himself. <laughs> Look at these jokers. <laughs> We're here at the second uh, day, second day of the conference here. Chris Burns last night with Brian Guerin was insane. It's just all about victory comes <gasps> victory comes It was mayhem tonight. Bodies everywhere. It was uh I don't even I don't even have words for it. It was a drunken fest. Drunken glory. Drunken glory. <laughs> hey Jizzle, was it drunken glory? Oh, uh, it was good man. <laughs> telling you man a lot of that through even obedience it like you come to know a facet of Jesus that you would not have until you stepped out 
Look at this. <laughs> he said it's the best chicken sandwich he's ever had, so I'm excited. In order to experience the Holy Spirit, we have to show up to the table with, with only the Holy Spirit on the menu in order for us to taste Him. Man, lunch was incredible. Yes, Conclusion? This is, this is Max's. Max's Bistro, Fresno, California. <laughs> Get the chicken club with, uh, what kind of fries are those, Eric? Sweet potato. Sweet potato fries with aioli sauce. Tell them <laughs> Rick sent you. And, uh, and you will get no discount whatsoever. Here we go. You'll pay probably double. <laughs> no, you won't. But it was awesome, man. Yeah, lunch. The context, or the, the conclusion, I would say, of the lunch is that without the Holy Spirit, we have nothing. We have nothing. We so this is going to be where the school is going to be at tomorrow. Holds about 300 chairs, yeah. and so yeah, man. So, awesome. Father, I thank you for tangible glory in every single one of these chairs. The manifestation of the person of Jesus, the fullness of the revelation of the Son of God, and the new covenant bring people into ease and simplicity. Every single person. Lord. Yeah, in Jesus' name, simplicity and ease come upon every person at the school of his presence tomorrow. Jesus. You know, whether you're new to faith or, or you, you, you know, you're a seasoned believer, you've been walking with the Lord for some time, I, I really do believe that this is a fundamental truth that we never stray from. In fact, uh, I feel like um, that when we begin to lose sight of the simplicity of what I'm about to share um, is when we start getting into, into some troubled waters. And so uh, I just want to share this with you. Uh, you know, no matter, no matter, as we mentioned, no matter what stage of life you're in with the Lord, this is a relevant truth. And, and I was sharing with, with, with Eric, um, when I gave my life to Christ, I was on active duty in the Marine Corps, and my first 365 days in walking with Jesus was in a combat zone in Iraq. And so, uh, so for me, there were no church services, there, there was no discipleship class, and all those things are great things, but I guess the point I'm emphasizing is that uh, the Holy Spirit is enough. And, and that's my point. He is enough to sustain you, to equip you, to heal you, to develop you, and to lead you in this life, whether you're a new believer or you're, you've been walking with the Lord for, for 50 years. Um, the Holy Spirit is, is enough. And I think a, a, a resounding question that we hear in the church is, uh, if I am a new believer, you know, where, where do I start? You know, where, where do I go from here? And I think a relevant question is not so much where do I go from here, but who is it that I go with on this journey? And the who is Jesus, the man, the person, Jesus Christ, by way of the Holy Spirit. And so I want to read to you very quickly a, uh, a scripture that we find in Ephesians chapter 3. And I'm going to read out of the Passion Translation. And I believe that it's one of the... One of the clearest depictions of the life of a believer filled with the presence of Almighty God and, and the progressive development of this relationship. And so let me, let me read this to you, starting in verse 14. It says, So I kneel humbly in awe before the Father of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, the perfect Father of every father and child in heaven and on earth, and I pray that he would unveil, that's a key word there, I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until, that word until uh, is significant in that this is progressive, um, until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. Now, this is not something that happens when you leave earth and go to heaven. He is describing the life of a believer right now in the earth when a child 
of the Most High God, when a son or a daughter um, is filled with the presence of Almighty God, this explosive power, I believe, is, is, is the essence of the Holy Spirit. And how do I know that? Because we see this also in the book of Acts. When they're filled with the Spirit, it's described as dunamis power, explosive mm -hmm. power. So he's, he's talking about an experience with the Holy Spirit. Now watch this, verse 17. It says, then, which again <laughs> describes uh, progression. Then, by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside of you, and the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Now pause right there again. For myself and for so many other believers in this walk, I, you know, I feel like we've, we've heard so many people say, uh, you know, uh, I don't know that I feel him, or, or it's, it's almost as if we need some sort of a stimulant or a, or a motivation to stay in the fight and stay in the game. And Christ is saying, by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside of you, and the resting place, catch that, not the wrestling place, the place of rest of his love becomes the very source and root of your life. Not your three cups of coffee, not your monster or energy drink, but his love becomes the very source and root of your life. But watch this, it gets better. It says, and then more progression. You will be empowered to discover what every Holy One experiences, the great magnitude, the astonishing love of Christ in all, not some, in all its dimensions. How deeply intimate and far-reaching is His love. How enduring and inclusive it is. Endless love beyond measurement that transcends our understanding. This is important, and I'm glad the Scriptures include this, because as I read this, it's almost, it's not almost, it is difficult for me to comprehend with my finite mind the unlimited riches of Christ's glory that live in me. Yeah. He's talking about the, the, the real experience of a Christian in this earth, whether you're a new believer or a seasoned Christian. Unlimited riches and, and multiple dimensions. Think about that. Jesus is multifaceted. See, you don't get this in one shot. This, this comes by walking it out with him. I started out with this question, where do I go from here? And it's not a matter of where do I go, but who goes with you? And this is what this life looks like. Endless love beyond measurement that transcends our understanding. This extravagant love pours into you until, there's another until, until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and He will exceed your wildest imaginations. He will outdo them all for His miraculous power constantly energizes you. Now, I don't know about you, but this encourages me in my current state, but it encourages me for my future because this experience is found in the man Jesus who dwells inside of me and dwells inside of you. And I'm here to tell you that he is experiential, that you can know him in this way. And that the journey of Jesus and you is a, it is an amazing journey, but for everyone it's gonna look different. So, that's the simplicity of this truth. No amount of theology, no amount of Bible knowledge and training, no work of ministry, listen to me, can substitute <laughs> the, the intimate knowing of Jesus and experiential life of Jesus by way of His precious Holy Spirit. There is no substitute. Yeah. He wants to reveal Himself to you more than I think we are aware. And so be encouraged today, wherever you are, that, that this life is available for you, and He loves you. So I, I bless you with that. Yeah, pray for him. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, Lord, for every person under the sound of my voice, everyone that's, that is watching, everyone that is hopeful and hungry and thirsty for you. Jesus, I pray that you just reveal yourself to them in the most real, most experiential, most tangible way that they have ever known you. 
Daddy, I'm asking that you fill them with your heart. Dad, fill them with your passion and with your compassion. Dad, release unto them visions and dreams, callings. Equip them, enable them, empower them, and comfort them, Lord, with your love. Wrap your arms around them, Daddy, and never let them go. I speak healing and wholeness into their physical body, peace into their mind, strength into their body. Daddy, give them endurance to run the race you've called them to run. But more than anything, Dad, I'm asking that they know you in this way and it continues to grow more and more in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, we're heading into do the school of his presence now. Yes, we are. It's going to be wild. Let's rock, man. Jesus. <laughs>